testing, testing. Can everybody hear me? Let me know. Welcome everyone. How's everyone doing today? <coughs> Great. Going to get started here. Very exciting time to trade 2020. Some really nice moves in the last week as well. Apple's one of those. Uh, it's earnings season right now, which is a nice time to trade. Okay, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I trade gaps, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. And if you're here today, you're here to look into and find out more about what I do to see if you're interested in learning from me. I think there's so many things available to people, so many different strategies, so many different things they can do with the market. You have to find something that resonates with you. And not everything works, okay? So you also have to find something that works. You have to find something that works for you, for your schedule, when you have the time to trade. And also, okay, it has to be in any market conditions. And I think that's the biggest piece here for people to take away because when you are in the market, and again, during the COVID-19 period here, the market has been all over the place. If you go back from March until now, it's very, very tricky. And you wanna be able to make money in any market conditions, whether it's bullish, whether it's bearish, whether it's sideways, okay? <laughs> any questions here before we get started? If you have questions when we go along, you can type it in the room and I will read them out loud, okay? So we're gonna to talk today about how to make $20,000 a month day trading big momentum moves. And Apple was one of those that we did. And another big move in that today, actually. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Uh, if you get my voicemail, you can leave me a message. I will call you back. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So I get this question from people who have been attempting to trade the market for years and failing. Can you really do this? Can you make money in the market? The answer is yes. Yes, you can but you have to have a strategy that works. And again, it has to work in any market conditions. It's about being serious, okay? It's about being consistent. I'm very consistent with what I do. I created my own method. I do gaps, I don't do anything else. I only trade gaps. I mostly do shorts, quite frankly, but sometimes we do go long, Apple was a long. So I look for bullish gaps and I look for bearish gaps, but it is about being consistent. Over and over and over again, I'm looking for the right move to trade. And if you're someone uh, that has been failing in the market or losing money in 2020 or even before now, you've got to start to get serious about what you're doing because you don't wanna waste any more time or any more money. There are billions and billions of dollars in the market for you to take a small, teeny tiny piece out of each day. I call it chunking it out, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. I think it's a lot easier for people to think of it in the concept of $1,000 a day um, or, you know, or even $500 a train than the idea of, oh my gosh, you know, $20,000 a month. How is that? You know, think of it, break it down. Look at it per day. Look at it per trade. Look at it per week. Okay. Then you can wrap your head around it. When you are in something, ideally you want to get a big move. It's the idea of getting momentum. And again, I'm going to go back to Apple and even Boeing, which we'll talk about today. That was a short, we did puts, we shorted that. But if you have a strategy that has big moves, you'll be able to, number one, make money in the, in the trades that have the big moves. And two, then, it will also cover some of the trades that you do that lose. Not every trade I, I, do, I do wins. Some trades I do lose, okay? But I have more winners than I do losers. And then because I have some really big winners, that's how you end up making good money doing this. And again, how much you make depends on your risk. Right now, today, we're talking about being able to earn $20,000 a month or, or potentially more. If you have a small account and you can only risk $100 a trade, that's okay too. Then guess what? You're trying to make $100. I say turn it over one. If you can risk $500, your goal is $500. If you can risk $200, your goal is $200, and so on and so forth, okay? But success or failure has a lot to do with the quality of your system. Because if you don't have a good system, it doesn't matter how much money you're risking, you will lose. And you know what? There are people that risk a lot in the market that sometimes lose. I've heard horror stories of people taking huge positions that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in their account and they lose. And they still keep going after it. But they don't know what they're doing, which is a problem. You've got to know what you're doing, whether you have $2,000 in an account or whether you have $200,000 in an account. You're not going to be successful just because you have a lot of money in the account. You have to know what to do. 
So how can you become successful day trading? The number one key ingredient to become successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy, which I do. It's gaps. That's what I do and nothing else that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. Today we shorted SNAP, okay? I don't have that in here, but we can pull that up and you can look at it. SNAP was a short, it's a day trade, okay? Stock fell, gap down and fell. And how do I pick the stocks that I'm trading? I use my rating system. This is what I teach in the class. This is what I do, it's what I do every day for the last 12 years. So I get up in the morning, I look for gaps, I scan for gaps. I first go to the short side. I sometimes will look at longs, but I prefer the short side, okay? I, I, and, and again, you can make money going long or short. I just prefer to short because I find that stocks that fall, fall quicker than they rally most of the time, okay? Anyways, I'm looking for a 26-point checklist. Boom, 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 boom. I go through it. And that's how I'm figuring out what I want to do every morning. I'm looking for 20 points or more. I'm looking really, in my, in my niches, for what institutions are doing in the gap. Are they buying the stock or are they selling the stock? Okay, that's the whole part and parcel of what I do. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction, which is very, very important too, that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you are trading on the side of power money, okay? Now, here was a really nice trade that we did in Boeing. Boeing is getting sold off, okay, or even in some days shorted. We shorted this, and again, entry, this is a day trade. This is not an option. I'll go over this in a minute here. Entry was 172.75, stop was 174.50. I always put in a limit order stop. Why? Because I don't want to lose an unlimited amount in a day trade. I do not use stops for options. The risk is the stop. Share quantity, 1,500. Risk is 26.25. Exit is 169.50. This was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. And really, this could have even gone more, okay? Profit was $4,875, okay? What did the stock do? Closed here, gap down, fell. If you look at the sides of the bar, you say, well, that's really not that big of a deal. But it actually was a beautiful entry. So because of the entry, because of the size, it was a really good profit. Again, if your goal is to make $20,000 a month, you just made uh, a fourth of your goal for the month in one trade. Again, it's the accuracy in the system depicting where I'm going to get in and then also the target and the directional bias, which in this case here for Boeing was a short. Okay, any questions here so far? Now we have done Boeing as a day trade short. We have done Boeing as a put, okay? I think I called puts in this last week, which worked. So it depends again, if you want to do options or if you want to day trade. Eric, I see you in here. One of these days you're gonna get back on the options letter. Now, what was another one that we did? We did INTC. This is a day trade. I like to take trades. I get in, I get out. Typically, again, we're trying to look for something really, really quick. What happened here? It was a gap. Stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here the night before around 60 and changed. Open in the morning around, what, 52. So this is a gap down. I rated it in the pre-market and determined that it would follow through lower, so we shorted it on the live day. Nice move in this too. Entry was 5170, stop was 5245, shares 4000, risk was 3000, exit 4991, boom, out. Huge, huge trade. Now, I know the risk in this is $3000. You could have risked half. You could have taken 2000 shares. You could have risked $1500 and you still would have made over $3500 in this move, okay? So this is what I'm playing on. Again, you see the momentum. And you see, again, we got the direction of bias. And this was a nice sell-off, okay? It's the timing, it's the entry, it's getting to pick. And many, many days I'm in and out quickly, you know, ideally, 
this was one of these days that we had the immediate sell-off and we got it. Actually, so was Boeing was similar to that as well. So I get up, I look for the gap, I rate it, I do it. And again, this and the other one I just discussed in the Boeing were shorts because I do prefer to short. But the idea is looking and seeing what's it gonna do beforehand. So, so I know to just get right on top of it. And actually, it's funny. I did not do apples a day trade today, but I could have. I, it went, went more faster than I thought today. We ended up shorting Snap. Apple was along though. Um, but that preparedness, that ability to be able to see, see something in the pre-market. Sometimes I even send options trades out at six o'clock in the morning. I mean, it, you know, I get up early, but that really can help you. Any questions here so far? I see some people coming in here late. In fact, let me pull up the INTC here just to show you this because I don't have the one minute. Just hang loose here for a second. Did a couple of videos if you guys and gals want to go onto YouTube later. I did review Apple in the market. <gasps> Oh, my Lanta. I didn't even go back and look at this. After the look at this. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Wow. Talk about momentum moves. This was the day that we got it. Look what it did. Boom. Wow. This was the day that we did it. And on the 24th, look what it did. It fell the 25th, 26th, 20, 20. No, this was the 24th. This was Monday. 27th, 28th, 29th, 30, 31. Low was 46.97. Gosh, I didn't call any options in this, but I could have. Look at that. Wow, I haven't looked at this since we did it. Again, this is the whole concept. I mean, we had a great trade in this. I actually didn't call any puts in this. I could have now looking back. Look at what this did. Again, high in the day of the gap down was 52. Low in here, the drop was almost, it was 46 and trades at 47. And let me go here to the 24th. Wow, I haven't looked at that in a week. This is, the, this is what I'm talking about, people. And that is a good example of not only follow through, but the power of the gap and really the, the power of momentum. Let me go back here. Try to squeeze this, hold on. And any questions while I'm looking for this? So we did this, boom, got the drop, got out. Very aggressive, very nice, beautiful gap down. We shorted it, it was fabulous. Got it, boom, drop, that's it, you're done, done for the day. Done for the day by 10 o'clock Eastern time. And these are the moves that I typically try to look for every single solitary day. You know, in an ideal world, it would be done every day at 10 a.m. Some days I am, some days I'm not. But, you know, ideally, this is what I'm looking for. And also why I like to short, as I was saying earlier, because, you know, the short moves go so fast. And, um, you know, I really, really like that. Let me go back to the slides. Any questions here so far? So that was a beautiful trade, okay? Again, you had to have known to do it. You would have had to hit it immediately. You would have had to know this was a good gap. And if you didn't hit it right away, so you missed the trade because it fell immediately. And again, that's the part of the idea of the rating system that helps you look at it and see it and find it and spot it ahead of time to be able to do something. You know, when I am looking at something, I'm saying, I'm, I'm actually trying to predict like looking into the future to say, this is going to go to this number, or this is going to go down, or this is going to go up, okay? And it really takes being focused in that, but it's price action in the gap. I'm not looking at fundamentals. I don't, I don't to be honest with you, I didn't even read the, anything about the Apple earnings. I don't know what they said. I don't even look at any of that. I wouldn't even have time to look for that. If I was having to look for that kind of stuff, I wouldn't get anything done. I'd never have time to sleep. So... I'm looking at the daily chart and I'm looking at the gap and I rate the gap in the pre-market and sometimes you can do it in the post-market, but I prefer to do it in the pre-market. So how do you make good choices? Have a system, be strict about it, don't deviate. How do you find quality trains? Again, have to have a system which you're gonna follow to find the quality trades, whether longs or shorts. It's using the system, and since I created it, I'm the best one at it. Now, if you come and you learn from me, you take the class, there could be a learning curve for you. You may not get everything at one shot. You may have to ask me questions. 
That's the idea of being in the live trading room. But, but the point is that you can take the class, learn it as you go. You should retain at least 80% of the information they say when you learn something new in the weekend on the class. And then you start doing it. And then I call the trades. And then you're making money as you're learning. And as you're doing it and you're seeing how the gaps are setting up, you will be able to see them yourself and do it and rate them and see the entries, which I call in the room. So I call the live entry in the room and the stop, like I did with all these trades where we're going over here today. Any questions by anyone so far? See some new faces here, see some old faces here. Anyways, the idea is to look for the how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and system that is profitable. Easy, okay? Again, you have to sift through and funnel through because there are many people out there that are doing things in the market that aren't all profitable, okay? Golden gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they focus on large momentum to trade. INTC is a good example of that. Boeing as well. Apple, which was a long, which I'll show you. I'll bring up that chart in a little bit here. What stocks should you trade? Stocks a gap and rate 20 points or more per my system. So the system is a 26 point rating system. It's based on the daily chart, but you don't have to have a perfect score. You're looking for 20 points or more to do it. And then you trade the gap in the direction of the gap. When do you trade them? Again, I trade them early in the morning, typically between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time when they set up. Now, what if I rate a gap and it doesn't set up, then I don't do it? Be easy, okay? So I've got to have that set up. And if I don't have that set up, then I'm not doing that. That is part of it too. Now, we were talking earlier about SNAP. We did it today as a day trade. This was a put that we did in SNAP back July 22nd. Dropped, fell. We did the put, expired 731. This was so cheap. Again, sometimes you can get these options. I just can't even believe how much some of these cost. 50 cents was the cost of this. If you had taken 150 contracts, risk was 7,500, sold at 90 cents, profit 6,000. Return on investment, 80%. This was so cheap. I just can't tell you how cheap this was. And actually, let me pull this up because we did this today. But um, this is a good way. Again, when you have an options account, you don't, you don't have to risk this much size. But if you want to do size, you can do size and things like this. Typically, we will look at something, though, that does have volume no matter what. Um, so that you could take size, whether it's the option or the day train. But we did the short. We did the short today. I did not call it put in this today. Um, but here was the day that I called that, got the drop. Okay, this is on this move down. Now, this was earnings back here. This fell on news, I believe, or something in here, and today as well. But this is today we shorted this. This was a nice move. Dropped, went to the next target. First target was 21, then fell to 2060. Could have gone to $20, didn't, but this was a good short today. But the put I just showed you, I called here, got the drop. So again, here's the momentum. The, the momentum was to the downside. When you buy a put, it's like doing a short. Today was a day trade short, an equity trade short. It's a difference. It's a different type of way of doing the trade, but these were so cheap. And again, you can open up an options account with $2,000, which is really, really nice. Um, you know, to be able to trade. With a light cost. Any questions here so far about anything that I've discussed at this period? I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I never, I never, really, usually never know. I try to give myself my brain a break at night, unless it's something like last Thursday night where we had Apple and everything else. I try to give myself a break and not look at stuff at night because I really want to get up fresh in the morning and give myself a 24 hour break if I can with of charts. Oh, here, I forgot I put this in. Here was the snap. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. This was today. Now, this was the day I called it, closed here, gap down. This was an earnings, called the puts, got the drop. And again, I'm looking for the gap. So how did I know this was gonna continue lower? I rated it, I rated per my golden gap system to short. How did I know this was gonna continue lower today? Same thing, same concept, except for I didn't do an option in this. We did the day trade. Let's talk about Apple. This was a couple of weeks ago. 
actually, it's funny now to think of this as a short. We did the 375 puts. Eric, I think you were asking about this. This fell at the very last minute. Sometimes that happens. Cost was 1050, contracts is eight, risk is 8400, sold in 19, this is a big move. Profit, 6800, return on investment, 81%. This was a short in Apple, which now you would never ever do if your life depended on it. But back, we looked at this July 23rd. July 23rd was here. Stock closed here, boom, dropped, fell. You see this? The momentum in here was pretty big and it was to the downside. So again, sometimes we'll short things that are strong, sometimes we'll go long things that are weak. I mean, it depends really on the gap. Again, I never pre-plan it. Oh, let's just talk about this here now. This is the gap that we did on, on for Thursday night into Friday. The stock closed here, gapped up. We did a day trade in here, we did calls in here, then it gapped up here. This just ran up like hotcakes. No, in the case of this, the time value did not hurt. Why? Because the drop down was so big. So again, you know, in this case in here, this drop down here was, uh, and, and actually it was quick too, okay? Um, it was quick and it was big. But again, don't get confused because you're not holding something. Like, I think this is where, I was trying to figure out what you were asking about that, Eric. I think you were looking at this because this rallied, or I don't know. Just because you do something, uh, doesn't mean you're holding it until the last day. Now, I know this gets a little bit sketchy in here when you do it over a period into, you know, the last day of the week or into a Friday to Monday or whatever. You know, you're always like, oh, do I want to hold it into a Monday? That can be, you know, problematic for people or people don't want to necessarily, they're worried about the weekend. So this was Thursday, the drop down was Friday, and maybe this is what you were talking about. It rallied on the Monday. But again, this had a profitable move before this even expired, so you would have gotten out. Remember, this idea of chunking it, chunking it, chunking it, chunking it, that counts, okay? It's not the point of you um, holding something forever and ever and ever and ever, ever, okay? It's the idea of you um, just taking the trade and making money and getting out. So, I mean, this is, you know, there, there could be many, many targets, many, many targets when somebody looks at something and does a trade. You can have two weeks, full weeks left and have a bazillion targets, but, it, and, but if you're up in the train, it's like, and you're not going to get out, you always take the chance of giving the profit back. And I think that is something that, you have to think of it like when you're trading, you're doing this for the purpose of what? Making money. So when you're up, you get out. You're not trying to like make millions of dollars in every single trade and get everyone to the dream target. If you're trying to do that, you're going to fail. I think a lot of people, you know, can't even take trades that are profitable. I call a lot of profitable trades. Sometimes people do get piggy about them, but you can't do that, okay? And this is what here, I was talking about this. Timing the market has a lot to do with whether or not you make money as a day trader. If you have a bad exit and you're up, you could lose. If you take it too late, you could lose. You see? So why is a Golden Gap 26 point rating system consistent and reliable? If you're not trading on the side of power money in the market, you will have a hard time seeing lasting and consistent success in your trading. You have to learn how to read and trade on the side of institutional money. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all time. And even if you think it's not, it is. And again, today the market showed strength once again. We're still trading in a range, but you gotta respect the strength of the market. And the cues have made new highs. Apple made new highs today, once again. You, you, you've you got to just focus on the idea of taking quality trades and making money. You, you set your risk so that if a trade loses, which some trades I take do lose, it's not the end of the world. If you feel like a trade is the end of the world when you lose, then you've, then you've just flat out uh, risked too much. You have to win more than you lose. Again, you have to have more winners and losers, and that's the only way to consistently make profits.
but your sizing has to be the same or almost the same in every trade. This isn't an exact science. If your risk is $500 a trade, or like we're talking about making 20 grand a month, if your risk is $1,000 a trade and your goal is to make $1,000 a trade, you know, you're trying to get in, it may set up quickly. If you end up risking 925, that's not the end of the world. But if you're risking 1,000 or you're supposed to risk 1,000 and you end up pressing it and risking 2,000, well, that is bad. Then you've taken two trades in one. That's not good. Because if that trade loses, you're going to need two trades just to come back to break even then on the day. You have to win more times than you lose. Okay, and that means you have to be right a lot. I'm right a lot. Some of you here actually know me. Eric knows I'm right a lot. But I'm not right all the time. So that's why you still have to choose your risk. Okay? But I'm right a lot. And I think the reason that I am also is because I read the market very well. I can tell when the market's helping me and I can tell when the market's hurting me and I may choose to get out of something early or hold it based on also what I see the market's doing. Again, helping me or hurting me, depending if it's a long or a short. And that's the benefit also, I think, of being in the trading room with me too. But I always look at the rating system. The rating system tells me what to trade, whether to get in or out. If you can tell where something's gonna go before it does it, you can make a lot of money. And on, on, on Friday, we did Apple late, but when we did it, I said, it's gonna to go to 420 today. I said, 420, 420 today, Apple's gonna hit it 420 today. And, and I knew that it was gonna hit 420 no matter what, it ended up going over 425. But I knew 420 was a number. When we did it, we got in, I knew 420 was good, and, and I was right. It ran up straight into the close. It happened late in the afternoon on Friday, but it did. So, you know, when you know something's gonna go somewhere before it goes there, it, you know, you can make money and sometimes you can make a lot of money. And that's, you know, just, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing thing. It's a gift. And how I came up with the name, the golden gap is because it is like finding gold in the market. Because when you find something that's good, that you know, is going to have a big move, then that is like finding gold. Because on any given day, there's many, many things that move in the market. And sometimes they go with the market. Sometimes they go against it. But on any given day, and you would look at, if you looked at hundreds of thousands of stocks to do in the day, it would be very difficult to predict what they're going to do, or where they're going to go. I can't predict where everything's gonna do every single day that's every stock that's trading. I can predict gaps that rate 20 points or more where they're gonna go. You see the difference? And that is something specific. That's a niche, that's selective. I can't predict where anything that trades is gonna go any second, but when I have a gap that rates good, then I can, do you follow me? So you set your risk accordingly, take the trade, put in the stop and go. Um, I have videos, Sri, Sri, first of all, Sri, you've been following me for years. I think you've been following me since either 2016, 2017. I'm absolutely, absolutely certain that you have. I don't know why you haven't signed up. I really don't know, but I know you're on the email list. And I know I sent out the year-to-date day trading results or my assistant did, I think, over the weekend. So you can go back and look at the emails. If you didn't get them, I will send them to you. On YouTube, I have... 2019, 2018, 2017. I mean, I don't know where those videos are. They're on the Stock Switch YouTube. You can go back and look. But I can forward you again the email that was sent over the weekend, which you were sent. You have been following me a very long time, and I'm certain that you're trading. Because when you come to open houses, you come. And I'm certain that you take my trades, and I'm certain that you're trading, but you don't want to sign up, and I don't know why. You know, it's very interesting to me. I get people that follow me, and they don't sign up, and then they lose money, and then they wish they signed up, and then, they, then, then they, then they don't have the money to sign up because they lost. <laughs> they say they don't have the money. Then they have to save the money, and then they don't come back. Then I mean, it's, it's like so interesting. Again, I'm such an independent person that when I started out, I did take one class. I'll tell you the story quick. I took one class. I did not learn in that class how to uh, trade the market or make money, but I did learn some very good. Uh, a good foundation of technical analysis. And I took that information with me and then turned it into something for myself where I created my own system using technical analysis. Because the, the way I analyze gaps is based on technical analysis. Like I said, it's not fundamentals. But if I hadn't had that foundation, I don't know where I'd be today. So I found that that class was important to me. But when I look back, I say, did I get my money's worth out of that class? Probably not. Because at the end of the day, I didn't learn how to make money. They taught a I think they taught like 10 different strategies in the class. None of them worked to make money. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It was like a crap shoot. And that's the reason I ended up creating my own thing. But the foundation of the technical analysis skills that I learned in that class and how to read candlesticks and really the, 
the very essence of the way that I reprice right now. I learned from the outset, which really helped me and was a good foundation. And I do teach that at the beginning part of the Golden Gap class too, because if, you, if you've if you been reading charts for a long time and you're relying too much on indicators, you will mess up a lot because there's no indicator out there that's gonna tell you where something's gonna go next. Trust me on that. If there was something like that, we would all never lose. And that's not the way the market works. So you kind of have to go through your own process. Again, people come to me, they leave, they come back, they leave again, they, you know, I don't know. It's very interesting, I've noticed, because now I've, I've had the stock switch for a long time too. And I know a lot of people and a lot of them that just are always around and I don't know. It's, it's just one of these things that people have to take their own beating from the market and take their own lickings. And at some point then you say, I think this girl knows what she's talking about. And, and I do, but you know, it's, it's a process. I'll send it to you, Sheree, I will. I will send it to you. But you know what, sometimes I send emails and they go to people's spams or junks. And I don't know why, but because it has stock market in it, there's really nothing I can do about that. It's unfortunate. It's probably in your spam if you didn't get it. Because my assistant sent it, I think, a couple days ago. Shows all the winners and all the losers. And I'm kind of behind posting videos, but I will try to get to that as well. Any other questions here? Um, there's one more thing I was going to say. We're talking about foundation and charts. I just lost my train of thought. If I think of it, I'll say it later. Anyways, that's how you can access the, the money that there is, is by being able to see it ahead of time. And I know, I know this is like, this may be too mind boggling for some of you to, to wrap your heads around. But for those of you that have traded with me, and Eric, you're in here, you're one of them. Michael, I see you here. Those of you, even Sri, you've been in the open houses. Those of you that have been around me long enough know that you know I have that ability. And when it, when it, when it hits, it's, it, it is, it, it's fun, it's exciting, it's amazing, and, it, and, it, and it's great to be alive. And I think that you know the focus that I have in the morning getting up early and doing what I do you know, is very, very important. And, and, and I, I myself, I'm a morning person. So I get up super early, even though I don't open the trading room till 8.30 Eastern time, I just get up super duper early and I start to rate stuff and I start to look at the market, you know, like at 6 a.m. So all that time before the market, the prep work that I do, it really helps me, the rating, the checklist, going through everything. But I measure gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find the stock that I want to trade that day. And what I'm looking for is ideally, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Two, a big move of the day. Three, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. Sometimes something goes bigger than I thought. That happened with Apple on Friday. Today, Snap was a trade. It was a good trade. It was a fine trade. You know, it wasn't the best trade in the world, but it was a trade. Okay. It was money. It was about 50 plus uh, cents, depending on where you ended up getting in it. And it was about a 45 cent stop. So it was about one risk unit. So today's trade in Snap, if you had risked 500, you would have made 500 bucks. That's a trade. That's money. You know what I'm saying? Again, going back to the $20,000 a month, if you risk $1,000, you would have made 1,000 bucks in SNAP. And we did it late. So when I'm looking for something, I'm looking for correct, correct trade selection. What do I mean by correct? I mean not taking something in the wrong direction. You know, not, 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 uh, not shorting Apple, which people, by the way, did today, which is completely and totally insane. Not going along snap, which people did today, which is again, insane. Not as insane as shorting Apple, but insane nonetheless. Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutional money. That is the key. That is again, another niche that I have. Being on the side of institutions increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends in the market. So I called the 40750s and the 410 calls on Apple on Friday. And if you held them, which you may not have done because it had such a big move, but you've held them into Monday, the stock ran up to 446. How did that happen? Now, I didn't hold that to there. It was a good trade Monday, uh, Friday for me. But some people I'm sure on the options letter did. 
to have something make a move like that, like an insane move like that, almost $40 from the strike that I called it, that is institutional money. They bought the stock and it, it rallied. Okay, that's how you're going to make money. You're never going to move a stock like that. And I'm talking about that's a move that happens within 24 hours, people. That's a big move. That's even something like Apple. That's like a 10% move that happens in 24 hours. At that price point, that's amazing. Okay, that's momentum. That's institutional money. That's buying. That's power. Okay. And by the way, I still think that's higher, even this week. But institutions move stocks either up or down. If you want to get paid, and the key is to be in the trade with large directional moves. Okay, again, whether it's long or short. If you're trading with institutions, not only are you going to side of momentum, you're also trading with professional traders and you want to be with them. They take big positions, you just make money in the flow. And as an individual trader, you'll be more successful if you trade like a professional. Like think like you're trading with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Even if you're not, like if that's how you have to think, that's how you have to think. Think like you're rich already. You can get there. Build it and they will come, you know, that movie, the baseball movie, think like that. The rating system looks at 26 points in the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read the direction correctly. Because if you are in the wrong direction, you're going to lose. And that is key. Sizing is important too. Taking profits is important too. Okay. But really, you're just going to flat out full on lose if you're in the wrong direction and stuff. Most of the time, you have to be consistent with the right movement. I know people scalp stuff. They scalp stuff in the opposite direction. People scalped Apple today and they shorted it because they missed the move up because they didn't understand what a bullish gap was and they had no idea it was going to go where it was and they didn't buy it and they didn't get it and they shorted it. That is the wrong thing to do, was the wrong thing to do. And when you do the wrong things and you make money doing it, which is even worse, guess what? Your brain will get all screwed up and you won't think right and you will just mess it up in your head and then the next time you will do the do that thing and you will lose an ungodly amount of money and it won't work because it really doesn't consistently work. So you've got to figure out what works most of the time. I wish that every trade I took worked. Okay, I wish that was 100% or 100%. That's not reality. Once you come to terms with that, once you come down to be grounded in reality with two feet on the ground, you will realize that it, you can still make really good money in the market without having to win in every trade, but you got to win it more than you lose. Okay, any questions here? Anyways, the points tell you where the money is flowing. Why does this matter? So you know what direction to take the position to profit. Okay, what do you need to make trading work? Number one, a strategy. For me, it's, it's gaps. I've been talking about this the whole time. This was a put we did back in the SPY. Gosh, it seems like a long time ago. A couple of weeks ago, the end of the third week of July. Uh, this was dirt cheap, too. Again, you know, the momentum was to the upside here. We could capture this on, uh, on the just to the downside. $3 was the cost. Six twenty-five dollars sold. This is a put. Dropped, fell, sold off. Profit was $81.25. 108% 108 return on investment is a good trade. Similar to the day trades. I'm looking for one to one. So if you took one contract in this and risked $300, you would have made $325. That's it. That's a good trade. You're done. Okay. And we did all of these on the same day. Remember I showed you the apple? That was all on that same drop down day where I knew that we were going to gap down the next day. We captured it. I called trades late on the Thursday. We gapped down Friday morning. Um, here was this day. So we fell here. I don't remember the reason why this was two weeks ago, but I knew on this day when I called the trade, we're going to gap down the next day and we did. So in this case here, the momentum was to the downside and I, and I wanted to capture that move. This was the same day I called the apple and I called a bunch of ones that day too. They were all shorts, but they were puts. Okay. So you have to have a system and you have to have a system to follow with rules for the picks. Only trade gaps and meet the criteria of 20 points or more. If there are none, you don't trade, okay? Take the gap in the direction of the gap, long or short, if it meets the criteria in the system, no deviation, follow the rules. Not all gaps are good. That's just the way it is. They must meet the criteria. Oh, here was another one. See, all of these I called around the same time as Thursday afternoon. This was, a, this was news, but I saw we were gonna gap down. This was the 260 puts in the queues 
Cost was 470, sold at 930, another really just very reasonable cost here um, for where I had called these, where the strike was. Risk of 7,050, profit 6,900, 98% return on investment. One contract, again, beginner risk or intermediate, you could have done two, risk almost 1,000. One contract before 70, you could have sold for 930. That is a good trade. So you would have almost flipped it around 470 bucks within one trade. This is taking it Thursday, getting out Friday. Taking it Thursday, getting out Friday. You know what? I was thinking about the other one, Eric, the one that, the Apple one that was on the 17th. That's what I was thinking about, the one that went the last day, I think, that you were emailing me about that you didn't understand. I don't think it was this one on the 23rd. Because this one didn't go the last day. That was, that was just, that was a different one. Yeah. Okay, so here is this. Boom, 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 boom. So this is, again, a put, or you could have shorted this, and here's the gap down and the drop. So you see how it fell through the strike? Okay, remember this was a 260, so I called it right here at the strike, and then it fell into it. And these are the best ones when they go in the direction of the gap overnight. Again, Apple, if you had held it from Friday to Monday, continued in the bullish gap up. It gapped up again. Anyways, what else do you need? Number four, monetary goals per day and per week to trade. It makes it easier to get your head around it if you think of it day by day. And that way, when you have a day where you lose, it's not the end of the world. You can still have a positive week and lose in one day. Goals should be based on a risk unit, which should be based on account size and monetary weekly, monthly goals. So if someone that has a $5,000 or $10,000 profit account is way different than someone that has a $25,000 retail account. Your risk is different. Goals should be three risk units. Ideally would be a, I don't know, you call it a dream target. Okay, something like the Apple. One is what you're looking for. Will I get out of something if it's less than one? Yes. Again, depends on the market, time of the day. If it went to the target, some trades will be less. But if you lose in one, one, one loser, okay, one good trade can turn it all around where you're either break even again or up, depending on how big it went, like that INTC we just looked at. But if you, if you want to do well, you have to think big about this. There is a level of commitment. Okay, if you sign up for my classes or the subscription services, you're committed. You're committed for the class, which is 16 hours. You're committed for the option subscription. That's one year. You, there's a level of commitment, but you're, you do better in the end by committing yourself. And I just, honest to goodness, don't know why people have a hard time with commitment. Maybe people are risk averse. Maybe that's what it is. But you can make money in the market if you're not willing to take risk. When opportunity comes along, you have to be willing to seize it. And I think that's something that I'm, I'm good at recognizing. And, you know, while, while we have time to think about it, you know, I've got the morning, I've got the pre-market, whether I get up at six or seven, whatever, however long I'm looking at stuff, I have that time to think what I want to do. But you don't have days and days and weeks and years to think about it. So you, you know, you have to decide, am I going to do this today? Yes or no? And they say, yes, it rates 20 points or more, and it's, I'm going to do it if it sets up. I never do anything in the pre-market or the post-market. So is 20K a month in this market doable? Yes. I have to say that this earning season was a lot better than last earning season, and I think that next earning season is going to be even better than this earning season because the farther we get into this situation with COVID and the longer this goes on, which is terrible, quite frankly, but we start to see more of the effects of it on the companies that the earnings that we're playing, the winners and the losers, both. And we're going to start to see bigger and bigger and bigger moves. Apple, like I said, just happened to be one of the winners in the situation. Boeing was one of the losers. So what helps with successful profits in this system? Money management. I know this is like trading 101, but you do have to risk the same amount each time. I do go over this in the class. Some people are very good at this. Some people stink at this. They know better. They don't listen to themselves. They overtrade. They risk too much. They think they can take a small account and just risk all their money in one trade. That's not the right idea to do. I do use stops. I've always used stops. I don't have a problem with stops. They don't scare me. Sometimes I get stopped out of something and it goes on to work. I just take it again. It's better than taking something than not having a stop at all. 
And then instead of losing one amount, I could lose 10. So, I mean, there's nothing scary about stops. No, you might lose, but the lo loss is fixed if you have the stop in. I'm very, very deliberate in my trading choices. I go one direction. I'm not going long and short the same stock the same day. I get conviction. I take it. I do it. I rate it. I see it. I'm, I'm not going long and short Apple the same day. You know, I, I'm just like very full on something when I'm doing it. And I think that makes me a good teacher, quite frankly. It's easy to follow me when I'm a, a mentor teaching in the room, calling the trades. I just think, you know, it helps people too. If you get up in the morning, you rate something and I rate it too. And then I say, I like this. And you're like, oh, I already knew I like that too. It helps you learn. It helps you get better. It helps you see things and get better at the system. And again, I do have an edge because I've been doing this a long time and because I read the market well too. But over time, if you do it, you can gain that as well. It's experience, it's time, you know, and, and, and I'm willing to be here to teach some of you. And I think that, that the, uh, there was a student in the last class, it, it was, he was so interested in learning. It was, I can't tell you the last time I had someone that interested in learning. I was genuinely, genuinely touched at how interested he was in learning this, the nuances and specifics. And I thought, man, this guy's gonna make it. This guy really cares and he's gonna make it. And you know, it's, it, you know, it's, I think some people are so hit over the head with losses or classes or doing this night after night and year after year that they just kind of lose, like I said, the momentum and the, and the interest in doing it. But I mean, if you've got a passion for this and it's something that it's just, it's, you know, it's on you, that you, it's a desire. It's the desire. It's the desire to be successful and not to be beat and the desire to win and really do it it's there for you. It's there for the taking. I mean, and, and for me, the desire was very, very strong. And it's one of the reasons I figured out a system was able to do it. But the desire has to, does have to be there. And for a lot of people, I just don't think it is. Um, Eric, email me. If you want a referral for a broker, email me. I can just email me, Eric. I'll send you that. Anyways, create a plan of action to achieve your financial goals whether it's $20,000 a month or even $10,000 a month, that's a lot of money for many people who are losing. It would be an average of $500 a day, and it's five months, more months into the end of the year. So you got five more months into the year, you can make 100 more grand at the end of the year, or 50 more grand into the end of the year, depending on how much you wanna risk. It's totally, totally, totally doable, but you gotta know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you have to follow someone that knows what they're doing, and you have to learn a system and again, I think the best solution is to do day trades and options because you get the profits in both. Anyways, I teach my method in a class, usually once a month, but if it's busy, then I stretch out the classes into two classes because I don't want to take too many people in a class because then I'm talking till midnight. So I have a class this weekend, if you're interested, August 8th and 9th. The next class after this, I don't have the dates yet, um, but the class is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. The Golden Gap course teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. The course teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. The course teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. The course teaches you how to get conviction in your trading, and not only that, how to get conviction in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for a consistent profit. It's, it's power, power, money. Okay, back to the chunk it out plan of action again. January 2021 is five months away. So say you have a small account now. You cannot risk $1,000 a trade. You just can't do it. You don't have the money. Risk 100, risk 150, risk 200. Build your account up. Don't take any money out of profits out of your account between now and January 1st. Trade, go through the process, learn, take a small account, build it up. Get to the point, set some goals for yourself. I'm very big on goals. I have a lot of sticky notes. I like those little yellow stickies. I have them like, I have goals each day. I have goals for my trading. I have a list of things to do. I mean, I'm very organized like that, okay? And it really helps you get things done. Like you're like, okay, today I'm gonna do a laundry and I'm gonna train till 1030 and then I'm gonna do this and this and this. It really helps you get stuff done. You have to be your own manager of your own time or you're never gonna get anywhere, okay? You have to be consistently profitable as a trader if you want to make it. If you're not consistently profitable, then you do not have the right plan of action in place. You can't be willy-nilly doing different strategies and different systems day after day or week after week. 
you need a plan of action and a reliable system. And you really can't rely on the market because if you're needing the market to get your trades, you've been screwed this whole year the way it is, okay? You cannot lose a lot. You just, you just can't, especially if you wanna make 20 grand a month trading. You can't have a lot of losers. So that means two things, getting it right many times in a row, not losing too much in one trade if it doesn't work out, which is where the stop comes into place. Again, it's a limit order stop. The stops help reinforce this discipline behavior. Don't say, well, I'll get out of it. No, you won't. Sometimes the things move so fast. You, you say you think you're gonna get out of it and you, you can't. It goes against you and you can't get out of it. If you have a stop in, you will get hit out of it. Even if it goes through it, it's, you're out. And you learn in the Golden Gap course where to put the stop. I also call them in the room. It's about quality, not quantity. And some days you may even have to take a day off because we all need a mental break you know, every once in a while. We have a few more minutes here. I'm going to finish up. Any more questions? It's a good, good lecture tonight. Anyways, what's your plan of action? If you want to come and be with me, trade only golden gaps. The rate according to the 26-point rating system so that you have a high rate of success in your directional bias. Period. Full stop. Two, get the best entry. So you can, with precision, to get in at the high of the day in the short, the low of the day in the long, to get the biggest move ideally, okay? Create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goal. If your goal is to make 20,000 a month, you know, 5,000 a week, whatever it is. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's the Golden Gap Course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And I really do love gaps. And, and, I, and, I, and I enjoy teaching too. And like I said, I just had a new student. So, so, so excited to learn. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the entries and exits. The class teaches you how to read institutional positioning in stocks, which is very important. And the Golden Gap course teaches you how to day trade gaps, also teaches you the targets. Okay, like I was talking about Apple at the 520 number. The reliability in the 26 point rating system is what gives me the conviction to put on a seven or eight thousand dollar risk in some of these options okay that's that's a lot of money okay and many many days i have multiple trains on so you you have to work up to that point it's it's again it's a it's a stepping stone it's like you're going up the ladder oh this is funny here 2017 my assistant did this webinar <laughs> i'm laughing so bad 2017 I just, I just saw this in here. I didn't look at this before he did it. <laughs> my assistant does my webinars, and he must have used an old slide. Well, 2017. <laughs> okay, let's, if we went back to 2017, what would we do if we knew in 2017 that in 2020 we'd be all locked in our houses for the majority of the year? What would we do besides stock up in food, toilet paper? <laughs> what would we do? If you could go back in time to 2017, what would you do differently? <laughs> Gosh, what would, you know, I'll tell you what I would do. I would have bought a second home before, before this hit to have a, a place to go because I'm stuck in New York because of this COVID and it's just been ridiculous here. I would have bought a, a, a second home if I knew this was going to happen. It's like, would I have moved out of New York before 2020? I don't know. Maybe I would have moved out of New York in 2019. Yeah, I mean, think about what things you would have done. I mean, you, you say, well, what could you do? You know, Kathy would get another cash. <laughs> I'll have to have my assistant make sure he checks dates and old slides from now on. Uh, 20, 2017 seems like a, a a million years ago. 2019 seems like a million years ago. Any Anything before the fact that we're stuck in our homes seems like a million years ago. Anyways, work smarter, not harder, okay? So learn to work smarter, not harder, to reach the income level you desire. Making 20 grand a month day trading is achievable if you set yourself in the right path. And I do think me calling the trades helps people. The longer you wait, the more you're pushing out, the further achievement of your goals and your own financial success. 
Time keeps ticking. 2020 is almost over. It's five more months away till Christmas. Can you believe it? New Year's? Did you achieve the goals you set for yourself this year in trading or your finances? Are you on track? The market keeps moving. Time keeps going on. And hopefully the end of the year will be a lot better and we'll have a vaccine and all kinds of things will be better and businesses will be open and the unemployment rate will have gone down. I know it's a tough time for people. But every day, time in the market marches on. You've got to take advantage of the opportunities that you find them. And you can see how, how important every day is in life and grasping life and living it to the fullest. Are you on the right path to success? Do you need to get on a new path? And are you ready to learn a unique method or a stale one? It's not too late to make this year great. And I really, you know, I, I do my best to try to teach people. I do my best to try to help people. But ultimately, it is up to you. You're the one that has to want to learn it. You're the one that has to want to train. You know, you have to, you know, like I said earlier, be motivated enough to say this is something I really want to do. And I think it's a good time because people are working from home. A lot of people that could not normally trade from their offices now can because they love their boss watching over them. And I always ask this question, how badly do you want it? I think that was something that for me, it was just without a shadow of a doubt was something that I wanted and I was going to learn how to do this and figure it out until as long as it took. So it took me three years, but it, I was just determined to figure it out. Empower yourself today. That is something that is extremely important in this world and in this time. The Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to trade. It's all the pieces of the puzzle. It's not just one thing. You're not buying something you're going to plug into your computer and it tells you what to do every day. You're going to use your brain. Guess what? That's my best asset. And it's yours too. You may not be used to looking at things in a certain way. You may, you may feel sluggish in your brain and want to rely on a computer program, but that is not reality. And once you get and understand that this is a skill-based thing that you will learn and do, and you apply the skill, and that is how you will make money. A lot of traders do not understand that it is a skill-based thing that they're doing. Eric, I think if you would keep yourself under control with your risk, you'd be better. Sometimes you get out of control. I think you're fine with a small account if you just will be happy taking a trade and making a couple hundred bucks. But sometimes you aren't, and I think that's where it's a problem for you. Now, while you know everybody wants a big account or a nice chunk of funds, like you said, I think you would ha I think you would do okay with a small account if you would be satisfied sometimes when you take a trade and you make just, you know, 200 bucks, 150 bucks. But I think sometimes you're not satisfied with that and then sometimes there's a situation. Do you know what I mean? It's you almost have to like restrain yourself or live within the confines of whatever you're living in. Do you know what I mean? You'll get there over time, but when you go off the rails, risking more than you should over trading, not getting out, all of these things. You people that have been trading for a while, you know your bad habits. You really, really do. You don't even need me to tell you. So anyways, my class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class is this weekend, August 8th and 9th. It's a hot one here in New York this summer. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, it's online. You can be anywhere in the world. Class is $69.99 US dollars. Email me if you want to sign up. I must send you the sign up forms. If you just want to do the newsletter, it's $69.99. Email me if you want to sign up if you only want to do the options. Some beautiful calls this earning season by me and some really nice moves, which I'm happy and thrilled about that we've been getting. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I didn't even look and see what's out tonight. I will wait till tomorrow and get up and see. It'll be interesting to see where this market goes after that move, too. Um, any questions from anyone about anything at all? And thank you for letting me go over a little bit here, Kathy. I know we started a few minutes late. Good to see some of you. I hope some of you are, you know, thinking about doing the class. Finally going to sign up. Sri, I will send you the information. Michael, you're welcome to rejoin the room or come back on the letter. I hope you're doing good if you're on your own. If not, you're always welcome to come back. Eric, I will email you the broker. Um, let me just see what else I was going to say. That's what we're talking about. 
The Gap Options course is this Thursday. I don't know if anyone wants to take that. That includes one month of the newsletter. It's $2,500. It's a half-day class. But you're not going to learn the rating system in that class. That's the big class. Um, what's closing in on you? A lot are closing. Uh, prop brokers are closing. I don't know any. I don't know any of that stuff. Well, you have two choices. You can go to a retail broker or you can go to a prop broker. But really, the prop brokers, you have to check out and must vet them or go to only a place where you know somebody that traded there is my two cents. I did not hear about that other place that you're saying there, which I'm not going to say out loud, but I'm not surprised. If you have any articles on, me, on that, though, Eric, send that to me. I'd like to read the skinny on those places going under. I really would. If you, that'd be interesting if you want to send me that information. Got to, got to trade at a good place and a reliable place, and you have to have a good platform too. But options, you can go to a retail broker and open up an options account, and you don't need 25000 Starting is a 2000 and it's a retail place. It's not FDIC insured, but it's SIPC insured. you got to call and find out. So I don't know if you want to do options or not, Eric, or if you want to get back into day trading. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? About trading. <laughs> trading only. <laughs> trading related questions. Listen, have a great night, everyone. Sri, I will email you. Eric, I'll respond to your email. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Stay safe out there, everyone. Please stay safe wherever you are. And I will talk to you all soon.